if you had to perform on the street, you're a guy that goes out, you need money to survive, you need to be able to take care of your family. Yep. What is the street performing thing that you do? Hmm. That's a great Great question. And you're going to find out on episode 184 of the Dan and Cody podcast. This is the Dan and Cody podcast. This is it. Right here, Cody. You put on those headphones and you go to work. Why are you yelling? This is where our message is heard. It's time to get hyped. Say it with me. What are we saying? Dan and Cody. Uh, Dan and Cody. Dan and Cody. We Dan and Cody podcast. Dan and Cody podcast. Dan and Cody podcast. Get some. Dan and Cody podcast. Okay, okay. Well, let's let's just suspend belief for just a moment and imagine Dan Hill. Performing in the street. Jenny is in tattered clothing. And Moxie is, uh, she's she's dancing on the corner for nickels. Nickels? And Dan is, ba- okay, she's trying to sell chiclets for 25 cents. Quarters. Sure, quarters, whatever. And Dan's got to perform on the street to support his family. What do you do, Dan? I think I'm doing, like, jonesing on people. What does that mean? Like, people passing by, I have a mic, I got a speaker, and I'm, like, ragging on motherfuckers. So you're doing crowd work? Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm, like, hype guy, like, mic and Yo! a speaker. So you're down, at, you're down at Santa Monica's promenade. Yeah. And you're... I'm just lighting motherfuckers up. Look at that guy in that green hat. Stupid people wear green hats. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Just do the math. This guy must be stupid. I mean, I would do a little better than that. Really? Do one. Nah, I can't. Do one on me, street man. It has to be like... Come on, do one on me. I'm not afraid. I don't know. Yeah, I'll be like, find something you want to rag on. Come on. Be like, what's up, motherfucker? Your shirt looks like a, a life game board. <laughs> yeah, that was a lot better than my green hat one. No. Uh, what are you talking about? But like so like with the Melrose Place podcast, I I I find myself like making fun of the characters, what they're wearing, what they're doing, what they've said, how they act. Okay. And like I feel like I do a good job of that. You probably do. So I you... think I think when they walk by when someone's walking by or something, yeah. I can like crack on them. And then enough people yeah. would be standing around, and then like they would stop or get offended, and then we'd have like an interaction. So and then, like, nice so, shoes. So then the show is for uh, the people. Yeah. Okay. But then it's gonna get to that point where someone's gonna come up and be like, "Do me." Thrown on the spot. Yeah, and then I'm gonna have to be like, "You be, oh, that shirt looks like a life board game." Boom. Yeah, <laughs> like all, all, all my Jones uh, Joneses are like checkers, are games. <laughs> Any, anytime but, you see plaid, you're just like, "That's a life board." What did you What did you guys call it in school when you like crack crack jokes on people? Jokes, like, oh, he just cracked a joke on you. Looks like he provided that man another insult. That's <laughs> what That's what we would say to each other. <laughs> no, that'd be um, like you you're joning on him. Jonan? Yeah. No, I never got ragging as one. Ragging, yeah, I've heard of that. Razin. Razin. Uh slam like, jamming. He slam jammed Jimmy <laughs> at the That doesn't sound good. Looks like Cody slam jammed Jared. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear there's a slam jam off? <laughs> slam jam off. Well, it'd be like a uh, slam jam off at lunch. He Looks was like slam jammed off. God, Cody's one of the best slam jammers in the school. Another slam jam off at lunch. I think some people called it like snaps. Like your mama's so fat. It'd be like your mama. Yeah. It's remember exactly. that show? I don't remember the show. There's a oh. show called Your Mama? Vil- Wilmer Valderrama. Oh, God. You're talking MTV garbage. On MTV, he yeah, hosted a TV show. I didn't show. watch it. And he'd be like, this is your show, Your Mama. And it would be like these your mama like tournaments, and you would get one hundred thousand dollars cash money. That's what he would say. <laughs> I just always remember him saying cash money, just like that. One hundred thousand dollars cash money. Except he has no 
real accent. Right. Because he's an American. Because he's <laughs> not Fez. No, he's not Fez, as much as you want to think he is. He's but not. for a time, in the thousands, Wilmer Valderrama became the authority on a cut down. On what, on on a, what was on a, a snap. On, on, a, uh, on a slam jam. Yeah. On a Raz. It's a very powerful feeling to be at the at the giving end of a oh, of a good diss. Absolutely. Yes. Most of those people were called bullies. Yeah. Dicks, I, I was a little assholes. bit of a bully. Yeah, I believe that. So I was too though with some people. Yeah. But I was also at the end of those because a lot of that setup is tiered. Yeah. What uh, what do you mean by that? I mean tiered by you've got the top dogs. Razzing on the lower dogs, and they can razz on anybody. Yeah. And then you've got this middle tier guys who get razzed on by the top dogs, but can't razz on the top dogs, but they can razz on the lower tier people. Yeah. And then those poor lower tier people are just kind of hanging out, twiddling their thumbs, wishing, I wish I could razz on somebody. So those are the people that become psychopaths and they kill their brothers and sisters. Are the, do you, would you say that the top dogs are the, People, they raz on people or Jones on people, and but they don't get it because they're the ones who can't take it and will fight. I feel like the only people that I didn't get like go in on were the ones I was afraid who would fight me. Yeah, you mean the unhinged crazies? Yeah, like they they could deliver a bunch of shit, but like. Yeah. They bet. I, hey man. I mean high school hey high man. school high school hierarchy is always Yeah. Uh, y- you know, you don't me- you know who not to mess with. Right. But most of the time the top dogs are the top dogs. And even if their zingers aren't that zingy. They had yeah, you need to control the peanut gallery. Once you have the peanut gallery, yeah. anything you say is Oh damn. There was this one kid in high school, and I, I'm really sorry I did this to him, but I used to we used to run this gag that he uh, stuck a Snickers up his ass, and then he pulled it out and he ate it. <gasps> and as the gag, we called him Snickers all the time. Yeah. And he gets so pissed. He's like, that's not true. I never did that. And of course he never did that. It's insane. But <laughs> in fact, because in a group setting... Wait, would, he did do that. He no, performed that, right? he did right? not do that. But You said he did. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there's this, or you created this urban legend yeah, of this boy. I created this urban legend of Snickers, and, and he would get so mad at me. And he's like, you're such a fucking asshole, Cody. And I'm like, I don't know, man. How does that shit start? There was a kid we used to call One Nut Boy. <laughs> And the rumor was that he only had one nut. Was it true? Did he play sports? No idea. Did he play sports? I don't know. I mean, that's like, how kids would find out, right? I knew about it, I and guess. I think he would was like know? he was like two grades below me, and I, I knew. That's Johnny. He's got he one like, nut. Oh, yeah, that's the one nut guy. Everyone called him one nut. Right, right, right. How does that begin? I don't know. I mean, I don't know who started the Snickers thing with that one guy. You got to piss people off. But I definitely kept... Kept it going. Right. Like, I didn't stop calling it. You didn't Snickers. shy away from it. I didn't. You know, you don't, like, you know, you get into those points and you kind of have to just say, it's fun to watch you flip out. Yeah. Over something that is so ridiculous. I didn't do it. I didn't kind of, I was never, I didn't do that kind of thing. There was, in sixth grade, in like all of my classes, there, there was a call, like the teacher would take roll. Yeah. And she would call on Daniel Butts. Daniel Butts, okay. And he was a no show, like, period. Like, there right. was no Daniel Butts. Right, right, right. And they always called his name. They'd be like, Daniel Butts at the beginning of the class and be like, no, nah, he's not here. And then it would get Daniel Hill here. And then there was one point in time, a pivotal moment in Patuxent Valley Middle School history where someone was like, you know what? I think you're Daniel Butts to me. And I was like, what the fuck? And then it started to like kind of spread. And I was like, I'm not Daniel Butts. I'm raising my hand for (laughs) Daniel Hill. This is a ridiculous claim that you kids are making here. 
I'm clearly not Daniel Butts. Clearly. I'm Daniel Hill. Yeah. Look at all my shit. Yeah. And I just like, it got to a point where I just nipped that shit in the bud. And how did you nip it? I, w- I looked at somebody. They were like, hey, you're Daniel Butt. And I was like, no, I'm not. I got really mad about it. And, uh, and then it sort of ceased. You had to really... You have to really stamp out that fire. Yeah, you got to be like a crazy person. Yeah. You got to fear them. You don't want that shit spreading. You got to let them, you got to help them fear you. Did you ever have like girls or, or, um, oh, all the time? Right, right, right. No, I never had girls. Fist me, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Bro. Oh, my hands are so juicy. What? No, I mean, uh, <laughs> I, I just remember silly rumors that I thought might be true that are, Absolutely not. And they're all coming back to me. What's that? Like, like, oh, she has crabs. She didn't have crabs. We were 12. <laughs> you know? <laughs> no, they're I like, don't. Oh, she's a slut. Well, we, Is used, she? We, we used to hear the, we used to hear things like she's a slut and stuff. But at the same time, like looking back on it. She's probably just really hot and people were jealous of her. Yeah. And she had sex with one or two guys. Right. Prison time, you know? It was that, and that was super slutty, right? I mean, in high school, Two I, guys? I, I don't know what it is like today, and I'm assuming it's not much different. Yeah. I mean, there are probably some things about sexuality with kids in high school now because they're, you know, they're pre, they're prepared in that they've seen, they seem, they've yeah. seen stuff that we haven't seen. But to be honest, like the first time I'd ever seen, naked girls i was like in second grade and that's because some kid like brought, live not live i wasn't going to live shows at that yeah. point no <laughs> but like the first time i think i'd ever seen like a like a really graphic adult porno movie because yeah. it would have been on a vhs i think i was probably 10 or 11 that was probably like seventh grade i mean Aside from like an R-rated sex scene and like yeah, an R-rated my mom's scene. VHS collection, right? Like, exactly. No. I think I was watching like uh, Michael Douglas bang Glenn Close in Fatal Attraction. Like, oh, there you go. Over and over again. Right, right, right. That was like my shit. That was <laughs> <laughs> had that shit. Like the the tape was like already either at the end of it or like at the beginning of it. That was Dan Hill's sex. Just scene. ready. Nice on the ready. Yeah. yeah, yeah, different times, different world, and a lot of pa- paper. Like I were, like seeing Playboys. Yeah, like Playboys and stuff. That's why, like, I had originally seen Pamela Anderson naked, right? And my buddy had printed it out on like like one of those scanner printers that he had. He's yeah, like, this was in my dad's collection, and he brought it to school. And everybody would go into the bathroom. The printer paper, like that. <laughs> remember that would go, kr, 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 but and it like was color each line. But it was color, <laughs> and, and it was a naked Pamela Anderson. And uh, we'd all go into the bathroom to look at it because the boys' bathroom—that's where all the dangerous stuff <laughs> would happen. And I was probably in second grade, maybe third grade. And you were distributing this. I wasn't distributing oh. it. That one of the one of the more troubled kids was. Yeah, because yeah. troubled kids are the ones that are, end up getting their hands on some really intense, dirty that porn kid, at a young age. He just needed a hug. I mean, <laughs> come on, buddy. Yeah, I was like, oh man, you're the coolest guy. You got any more of this stuff? You printed that. You printed that, man. Like, I want a printer. That's like, how old were you? I don't know. I was like seven, eight. You're seven years old. Your kids are just printing shit. I mean, <laughs> that slowly. And, yeah. and you're getting away Mom's with gonna it. Mom's going to be back in four hours. i got plenty of time to print this one. Yeah, what are you going to do? That Remember when photos on the internet would load like line by line? Yeah. And you'd be like, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Ah, fuck it. They don't get that. They have Pornhub. Instagram. Yeah. Uh, you can so, say whatever the hell you want on Instagram. So I'm at, I'm at the courthouse today doing something top secret. Yeah, oh yeah. And I'm sitting next to this guy. And this guy is like looking at Pornhub. He's looking at Pornhub. He's looking through videos of yes. Pornhub in the courthouse, just waiting to go into court. Oh, God bless him. And I'm just like. Was he like a pig? No. He's just he, a regular guy. Just a re- like, I mean, he was like thin and like, you know, like kind of thin. How old? He was probably in his late 40s, early 50s. 
and just no reservations. I mean, about I don't know about no reservations. I mean, it's probably rude that I was just looking. He didn't even have it like his low. His phones. I mean, it was like kind of on his lap, but I like looked over and I'm like, Pornhub, porno. He's just looking at porno right now. <laughs> Part of me kind of just wanted to turn and be like, "Come on, man." Well, I would, I would want to d- dig deeper. Like, what is he? What is he? Searching What's he checking for? out? But I couldn't. Like, it was enough to where there was a shade on the screen, but I couldn't fully see what he was looking at. Wow. Yeah. I wonder if he was on the courthouse Wi-Fi. <laughs> That's what I thought, too. I was like, this guy's insane. What's he doing? They got an IP address. They'll track it back to him. He's going to jail for looking at porno in a courthouse. <laughs> is that is that illegal? Probably not. Who knows? But, yeah, they got they got access to all of that shit now. We were we had to really seek out. No, you had to work for it. I, I, I stole. I stole Playboys from, like, Walden Books. Wow. Like, I was risking being a criminal. There was this big... To see naked women. Well, there was this big, like, thing with my school, my high school uh, resource officer, the cop that was in our school. Mm -hmm. And I was over at one of my buddy's house one night, and I stayed the night. We had, like, a sleepover. And uh, I guess in the middle of the night, he was, like, looking up porno stuff. And so... Uh, no big deal. I didn't really think much about it. So, like, a couple days go by, and he's like, Cody, dude, got in trouble. Parents found out. I was looking at porno. I need you to take the fall for me. What? And I said, uh, what? He's like, yeah, I need you to, I need you to say it was you that was looking at the porno. No! And I said, (laughs) I said, I said, all right, man. Sure, I'll tell him I looked at porno. I don't care. Like, it's not my parents. Sure, I'll tell him I looked at porno. And so well, clearly they're going to tell your parents. So, well, no, here's the crazy fucked up thing about it. So I tell him, uh-huh. right? Well, a day goes by and we're in class and the school resource officer pulls me down. Oh God. And he's like, Cody, the rent a cop. Yeah. Well, no, these are, these are true city police. Officers. These are like County cops. And really? they put a County cop in each school. And he's like, Cody, did you, uh, did you, uh, look at uh, porno on uh, whatever it says. And I was like, no, man. It wasn't. He he asked me to do it. I've got friends that'll tell you that he asked me to do it. Yeah. They know. I didn't do it. He's like, well, uh, somebody used a credit card to purchase the pornography, and they said that you copped up to it, that you were the one that did it. And I said, I didn't do it. I didn't use anybody's. I, I didn't steal anybody's credit card so to he buy made, porno. He so made you admit to half the story. He made me admit to half the story without the full thing because the parents didn't ask me if I used their credit card. They just asked me if I was the one looking at the porno. I said, "Yeah, sure. I looked at the porno. I feel really bad. I'm super sorry about it." Blah blah blah. Next thing you know, they call the cops, and then he ends up getting down there. He ends up getting called down, and then they, you know, corroborate our stories or whatever it is. And this is this week's true crime. Dude, uh, these parents are <laughs> these parents are dicks. And then my mom finds out, and my mom's like, I have to go have coffee with them now. And I'm like, well, <laughs> Mom, I didn't look at the porno, so we're okay. And she said, well, this is a real mess, Cody. And I was like, yeah, it sounds like a real mess, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Your mom was here last week. This is what we should have been talking about. We should have been about. talking about this porno scenario. Oh my God! That what a terrible friend. And what I don't, I don't agree with the parents getting the school involved. Well, this is a phone call. She called the police. Why? She didn't call the. She didn't necessarily call the school. Cause you stole. She called the police, and the police knew that we went to the school, and it's easier for the police for a for a police officer to interact with a kid. It's more comfortable when the kid knows the police officer. Right. So the police officer is somebody they keep in the school and it's easier for that person to talk to. Mm. So that's why that's a big re- that's another big reason why they keep the cop in the school. I see. So the police department asked him to look into it. What? It's bullshit. Yeah. Still though, the parent the, the like parent the- called the police because they charged how x amount of dollars of porno on their card? I guess, it's man. Probably 20 bucks. 
in in nineteen ninety eight. Yeah, that's he probably or bought ninety nine and two thousand. He probably subscribed like to a monthly subscription of like Hustler. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I don't even know what it would have been at that point. Yeah, that's I don't. Would you? All right, say Fitz has that same issue. Yeah. Are you are you calling the cops or are you calling his friend's parents and I'm, I'm sorting having, it out? I'm having a conversation with the parents. Yeah. Like this is like him. I wouldn't I, even I, talk I think, to the kid. I think the looking at the porno doesn't bother me as much as stealing somebody's credit card. Yeah. And thinking that you can use that to look at your porno. And being able to use that. Yes. I didn't know how to fucking use a credit card when I was a kid. On the internet? 15, 16 years old, put in a credit card number and an expiration date? That's not hard. On the interwebs? Yeah, why is that hard? I never did that. Okay, that doesn't mean it's buy, hard. I didn't buy anything online. Yeah? You were, you, yeah, because your mother's scared. Don't you dare buy anything online, Daniel. Yeah, you realize they'll steal all the information. The biggest, the biggest fear my mom ever instilled in me was like, <laughs> when you got a, she was like, when you get us, you're gonna get this cell phone, okay? And it was like prepaid for the longest time. And the reason she gave me a prepaid phone was because she was worried that I would just call China. <laughs> I remember this shit. And I'd be like, Mom, what is going on? She's like, well, you know, you get on the phone and you call China, and then it's $500 for the bill. And I was like, Mom, I don't know how to call China. <laughs> like, to accidentally you you, call China? You, Do you know how many things have to happen? Absolutely. How many series of, of fortunate events like, need to take an, place? As an adult now, you know what you should have done? Mom? Mm. How about you do me a favor? I want to see you call China right now. Yeah. But just, Can you call China? Just like fuck around on your phone, push a bunch of buttons, and call China for me real right. quick. Right. You can't. It's impossible. No. But that was such a fear. She's like, you're going to call China. I know it. You're going to get this phone, and you're going to call China. Who? For what? And Absolutely. for how long? Absolutely. Like, what are you? And what are you going to have a conversation with somebody that doesn't even speak your language? Mom, explain yourself. And I'm so, like, is the word cognizant of what? Of, 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 of like Moxie talking about me saying dumb shit to her later. You know? Are you really? You're <clears throat> you're worried about that? Oh, I'm very aware. Uh, of I it. don't care. I'm not I'm worried like, about it. Is this something that she's gonna remember and then later be like, Dad, what the fuck were you talking about? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm kind of looking forward to those moments because we're all gonna do it. We're human, man. My mom told me to stay off my cell phone in thunderstorms because I get struck by lightning, dead. When I was, when I was six, uh, we were like roughhousing. My mm-hmm. mom was in the mix. She's kind of throwing us around. And I cried. And she looked at me and she said, Stop being a pussy. <laughs> Is this a true story? True story. And I remembered that. And I remember that moment. I remember how it made me feel. Boom. And it like shut me down. Wow. And I told my mom that like when I was 26 <laughs> or 27. <laughs> and she said, She said, So? You were probably being a pussy. <laughs> and God I was, bless Sandy and Frederick. And I was just like, and then you wonder, Ma. You wonder, you wonder. why I'm falling apart here. Stop being a fucking pussy, Cody. <laughs> Don't be a pussy. Uh, I ran the Tough Mudder. My, mom, my mother's first uh, words of encouragement. Daniel, don't be afraid to quit. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mom. She just wants you to. She's just looking out for your best. Well, I don't know what it is. Yeah, her best. Yeah. Well, don't want me on the phone. I mean, calling I, China. Honestly, I don't even know what got us started on this whole tangent. Oh, uh, it was like school. No, no. Like we kicked off the thing. Like, what would you do for to earn street money? Oh, uh, it was. And then it got into like you said you wanted to raz people on the on the. In yeah. the promenade, and then that led down. Cut downs. Cut and then downs. Cut downs in school. Cut downs in school. Bullies. Bullies. Uh, yeah. We'll just listen back. Yeah, That's it'll how be we good. Got yeah, there. yeah. Okay, cool. Woo! Yeah, man. Um, I was listening to our intro music. Yeah. 
And we listen to it every time we uh, start a show. And I really think about it now. Now that we listen to it all the time, it's like, like the opera music in the back, O Fortuna. Yeah. Dun, 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 right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, like, it gets to a point, like, well, like, say it with me, Dan Cody, Dan and Cody. And then, like, there's a click of a button, right? Yeah. It's like, yeah. and then lightning strikes. And then our voices merge together as like this God figure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yell, Dan and Cody podcast. Dan and Cody. Yeah, yeah. What about it? I'm always thinking like, so what? What exactly is the button? And it like it's like clicks and it's like, pew. Like, does that button press Michael Tab? Does that mean? Did that trigger the lightning, or did that trigger the pew? <laughs> Dan and Cody podcast. I like to think that what that did was that button actually took our personalities and created one. And merged which it. merged it. The lightning was actually part of the effect of the merging, mm. which then led to the Dan. And that's us. That's like our, that's our, uh, our unwelt, you know, it's our inner beings. It's our, it's our, it's our power. So together. then where'd the lightning come from? The lightning is the effect of these minds merging. Oh, I see. It's the it, the, it was caused by the merger. And that it it, it, it So we merge, but we don't say anything mm-hmm. and the lightning crashes. Well, what happened yeah, it's kind of like when two powers are combining, the electrical, the the power, everything yeah. gets it together, and then all of a sudden the real explosion isn't the thunder. The real explosion is the Dan and Cody podcast. I see, I see. Okay. Thoughts? I mean, I'm kind of there. I'm still on this button. It's a big, like, click. What is that? What is it? So who clicked it? You know? We did, simultaneously. And then our voices control the weather now. No, man. I think you're misunderstanding it. Mm-hmm. You're trying to you're trying to provide more cause. What it is, it's kind of like our heads had a machine attached to the top of it. Yeah. You and I are sitting there having these conversations. You're saying Dan and Cody, Dan and Cody, Dan and Cody, Dan and Cody, and then uh, Dan and Cody get get some. Yeah. Click. We both do it at the same time, right? Yeah. Then that click, what happens is the machines that are on the top of our head suck out our brains and shoot them up at oh. such a high rate of velocity. It's like such a high rate of speed. And as they're coming together and creating one giant brain, the 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 uh, the, the chemical reaction, the energy, the force, whatever it is, as they come together, that's what creates the thunder. Interesting. It's the com- combination of them. And then at that point, you have almighty dan and cody is one voice i want like an animated visualization of of the intro i think that would be really cool and especially with like, the way i just described it that yeah. would be dope like us like our eyes are kind of crawl like our minds have been wiped to jello yeah and then above us is like this weird you know biracial some, <laughs> man beast some being with two dicks <laughs> <laughs> but you can't see him. No, nah, you can't see him. No. All right. Okay. Cool. I want to tell you about a company called JC Room Blocks. Do you have 10 or more out of town guests coming to an event near you? Maybe you have a bris, a wedding, a family reunion, a science convention. Maybe some friends are coming in town and they just want to get drunk in one place. Or your mom's coming into town and she's got 10 brothers and sisters and they need a room so they can all come over to your house and have a bagel. Well, I have the answer for you. JC Room Blocks. They research hotels in the area that you need the rooms. So if you're in San Diego, they're going to find those rooms. They're going to put them together for you. Oh, what? You need to be in Boston for a little bit? No big deal. Go over to Boston and hang out with your Boston friends. You got 10 or 15 of them and you need a room? Fucking Boston. That's what you're going to do. Since they're certified travel agents, they can get you the lowest possible rates. On top of discounted rates, they can also negotiate highly discounted bridal suites, shuttle service, and food and beverage functions. If you mention the Dan and Cody podcast, that's us. They'll waive their fee. That means you don't pay anything. 
okay? Check them out, jcroomblocks.com. I'm going to repeat that, jcroomblocks.com. They're on Facebook, they're on Twitter and Instagram. Follow them, check them out, get all their rooms! Broski, how much are you getting paid for jury duty? I am not on jury duty. Oh, please. If I was to be doing jury duty and you get on a jury, they pay you $15 a day. Oh, interesting. Yes. Well, that's the same amount LA is paying the homeless an hour to clean up Skid Row. (laughs) The homeless, Cody, are making more money than you if you were serving jury duty. Well, I think the difference between... An hour. Okay. I I think there's a couple things here with this little... You you don't even have to read an article to me. I'm I'm ready. If the headline is $15 an hour to the homeless to clean up their own garbage, (laughs) I would say it's cheaper than paying uh, the... um, The street cleaners. The street cleaners to come in and take care of it every week. And it's a mess. Yeah. I can tell you from experience. Yeah, you go down to Skid Row pretty we, regularly? Every day. What? No. I, we had two homeless outside of our apartment for a long time in Van Nuys. And uh, there was just two of them. And Same they left, mattresses. They left quite a mess. It yeah. was filthy. Well. I didn't touch it. Imagine if you had no garbage can to put stuff in. Mm-hmm. Not that these people didn't have access to a garbage can. I'm just saying. And they just, what do you do with it? People create a lot of waste, man. But the issue, I feel, is the mental illness and the accumulation of oh, yeah. of things that aren't necessary. Like what? Like, like they accumulate and hold on to trinkets that have no, like, use. Okay, I like this. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like the shopping cart, useful. Keeps yep. your things in it. Yes. What's actually in it? It's like shit. It's like a boot. What do they say? One man's garbage is another man's better garbage. One man's trash is another man's treasure. There you go. That's even better than mine. Yeah. Yeah. One man's donuts, another man's Snickers. Right, Snickers? A <laughs> <laughs> nice tie in. Great tie in. Nice, yeah. The crew has cleared uh, more than 3,000 pounds of hazardous waste from homeless encampments. Wow, that's crazy. I wonder who's tracking the hours. They must have a foreman or something. Yeah, and how are they, how are they cutting the checks? I don't know if it's a, is it cash. It's probably one of those things where they're like, okay, guys, clean this up. And then when you're done, We'll give you some cash. Because wouldn't they be lining up? 15 bucks an hour? Fuck yeah. Maybe. Taxed? Maybe. Like, Would not, they be lining up? They're not taking this shit down to... That's the other thing, too. Is like I've seen homeless people in L.A. when I was a door guy at Cabo Cantina. Yeah. There were some people like just walking around that like if you were to give them money, they would know what the fuck to do with it. They were so like gone. Yeah. I was like, would you just? That's eat? why I'm saying there's there's a lot of people you're probably not dealing with. I mean, you know, mental illness is a real a real thing in the homeless community, and it's something that you know cities, especially Los Angeles, the city of Seattle, yeah, like all of these places struggle to maintain and manage. San Francisco is really bad. California has struggled to handle the homeless, but homeless people come to these these areas because. There are services available to them that they can use. And because the weather is temperate and they don't have to worry about potentially freezing to death in the winter. If you were homeless and you could pick the city in which you lay. If I was homeless, I think I could pick the city in which I lay. Where would you be? I mean, I would would you choose. I would probably... Oh, man, that's tough. You have to go the south somewhere, somewhere where there's money and people hand it out to you. I guess if I'm homeless, I'm bumming it. I'm, you know, I'm I'm peddling, right? Yeah, you're like sleeping on the street. I mean, it's probably... Probably do Santa Monica, man. No, 
you know, I think I'd have to do somewhere where I could expect a lot of uh, charity. L.A. offers a lot, but I imagine there's a lot of people left out because the population, because the demand is so high. And I don't necessarily know if the supply is available. You think there's too much competition? Yeah. Even in the homeless, even in the homeless world, there's competition. Yeah. It's going to suck if you're like. Who's the king? You're like a loser, but you're a loser of the homeless. Right. Like there's a, there's a cool. There's a hierarchy in the homeless. I don't doubt that. Like you could be like the nerdy homeless. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that guy. Oh, yeah. Don't hang out with him. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I don't know. Don't fucking hang out with him. He's Not weird. all homeless people are created equal either. Right. So I would probably do like I can't do a humid city. Can't be down in Miami. Can't be down in Florida in general. Can't be in New Orleans. I mean, LA is probably the smartest choice. Yeah. But, LA, you, but you need, but you you can't be homeless like up in Santa Clarita or like Palmdale or like it's too hot. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like L. A. is probably your safest bet. Yeah, you need that ocean breeze. Yeah, man. San Diego is probably the best place. Hawaii homeless. Mm. You got a lot of. I've never been to Hawaii. I don't know if they have that much of a homeless issue. A lot of out of towners. A lot of people on vacation. They right. have disposable income. Right. They just probably just want to get you out of the way True. so they can enjoy the vacay. Right. More inclined to be like, here, take a dollar, I'm trying to make memories with my kids. You That's know? Fair. It's funny you say memories because I remember being in California when I was a young boy with my mom and my dad and my brother. And she was like, and we were going to Disneyland. Pussy. <laughs> yeah, she's <laughs> We're gonna ride this ride, and I'm like, I'm not doing it. I can't. She's like, Stop being a pussy. <laughs> uh, but my dad, some the homeless man came up and asked us for money. Yeah, I remember this moment, and he said, uh, "Let me see what I got." And he pulled out of his pocket and gave the man money. Yeah, and I was like, I just remember this moment. It was such a. He, there's these things like that, like you said with Moxie, that you just kind of, they 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 just kind of stay. Yeah. And you're like, why? Why do I have that? Why is this even something that's there? But yeah. It's weird. Super odd. And, you know, what are you going to do? <laughs> what are you going to do? I don't know. What city? L.A. You're going to L.A. too. I mean, I think so. You have to. I. I it's funny. I'd, r- I'd rather live here homeless than live here now. <laughs> <laughs> than pay for it. Than pay for it, right. I'm going to Hawaii. I'm going to Hawaii, period. I don't know what amenities Hawaii offers to the homeless I think I'm going to call it right now. When I was a young kid, I was like, I'm going to live in California probably. I was always West Side. I liked Biggie and all, but something about Tupac, I was like, California. Really? Yeah. When you were a kid. You know what I said? Uh, I'm going to live in Salt Lake City. Utah. I'm going to live in Salt Lake City, Utah. That's where I'm going to go. So I think I'm living out my days. Hawaii. I'm going. What? At some point. I'm going to have residence. Really? In Hawaii. You're going to have residence in Hawaii, huh? I'm calling it episode 184. The Hills will live in Hawaii at one point. Okay. Well, I think. I am here to support you. Tiny home. Oh, my God. Moxie, I fell down the stairs in my tiny home. <laughs> Come help your paw dad up. Oh, geez. That's funny. That'd be so, crazy. Skid Row's getting cleaned up, wake, making way more money than Cody. If he was serving jury duty right now. If. Yeah, big if. <laughs> um, you love a burger. Absolutely. From a restaurant. 100%. And you appreciate the tastiness of French fries. Yeah. And you love a good can of Pringles. Extremely, and you would be you would easily be considered a white bread guy. What do you mean? I like, mean, you eat a lot of white bread. Yeah, I like white bread. You like white bread, like you are. That's who you are. I'm a fine. I'm a fan of the white bread. Okay, well, big news: a 17 year old boy uh, has gone blind <gasps> because he is identified to have a B12 deficiency low copper and selenium levels, a high zinc level, 
reduced vitamin D level, and a uh, a low bone level density. Because all they ate was fries and white bread and Pringles? Yes, because his diet consisted... <laughs> now, this is just speculation that this is what the cause is. But um, normally these kinds of conditions are uh, reversible. But essentially what had happened was this kid was never told to change his diet. Yeah. And uh, the fact that b- his BMI, like nothing was changing on his body. He wasn't gaining weight or anything. Yeah. But the amount of garbage that he was putting in his body affected his vision. Wow. And uh, he is, uh, you know, basically saying that it's very likely that this is what caused his his uh, his blindness. Just eating Pringles and burgers. Yeah, like vitamin, like B12 deficiency can cause optic neuropathy, but it is very unusual to find dietary de- uh, deficiency when animal products are consumed. Uh, examples, ham and sausage, which are significant sources of B12. So, I don't know. Something was weird with this kid, and this kid ended up going blind. Let me guess. He's suing all the places he ate food from? No, no, nothing like that. It was just kind of an article about this kid that went blind, and the doctors aren't exactly sure what it was, but uh, the patient told him that the patient told doctors he'd only eaten fries from fish and chip shop, Pringles potato chips, ripe bread, slices, slices of processed ham and sausage since elementary school, and he avoided foods with certain textures. He said he first visited a doctor at age 14 complaining of tiredness. And uh, they prescribed him a medication. He had a normal BMI height and weight and uh, showed no visible signs of malnutrition. But um, the doctors discovered low vitamin B12 and anemia. And they treated the, the, the patient with B12 injections and offered dietary advice. But one year later, there were signs of hearing loss and vision assist symptoms. But the doctors did not find the cause. His vision had worsened to the point where, at the age of 17, he was completely blind. Guys, you got to listen to your body. You can't just shut it down. You're, if I'm telling you, your body will tell you when shit is wrong and right. when you need stuff. You this gotta, is definitely one of those situations. You got to open your ears. Feel yourself. When I go out, if I haven't like r- gone for a run or something in like three days, right, I'll feel tired, I'll feel sick, and I'll feel like pissed off. And then it takes me a minute to like sort of realize it and and say like, what is what is happening? What what's going on in my life? And like, oh, you haven't you haven't gone for a run. Oh, interesting. And it, like it tells me, I start mm-hmm. feeling like shit. And then uh, as soon as I go, it's like, okay, you're back. I feel better. Good job. Yeah. Okay, but and I, but I feel like it's it's like that for food too. Like sometimes, like I'll just be like, you you must eat us eat greens. I'll get like ravenous for it. Yeah, yeah, your body's telling you to do it. Yeah, yeah. I mean that happens to me too. It's just like you have a desire to eat a certain thing. The, yeah, the other day I I ate a full can of corn. What? Yeah. Like what? It was just what like, time of day was it? It was like dinner time, but like I picked up food. Yeah. And um, because Jenny was like hankering for a chicken sandwich, so I got a chicken sandwich too. But like I I broke out the chicken sandwich, and then I was like, also get in that cabinet and crush that can of corn. <laughs> Cream? Nah, straight. Straight corn. Just corn and water. Heat it up. Dude, I made Ding. the most simple. Corn on the cob the other night, and it was the sweetest, freshest, dopest corn you ever put in your mouth. Corn's bro. an underrated vegetable. It's and not it's, underrated, man. It, it's, it's getting it's, a bad rap. Not getting a bad rap. It's uh, like they're all like, "Oh, it's very carby." Yeah, it's like the carbiest vegetable. You know what? Go fuck off. All right. I, I like corn. It's a veggie. It counts. It does. It's very good. It's starchy. It's like potatoes. It's great. Yeah, it's good. Corn is so good. Yeah. I don't want it to be an outsider of, like, your broccoli, your cauliflower, your carrots. Corn's in there. Get a bottle. Don't you separate corn. Nobody's going to. It means too much to you. They're trying. 
Big who is big vegetable? Big vegetables trying to put a lid on corn because it's yeah. getting a little too powerful. It's getting. You're not going to break yourself away from the group. You're not going to have your own part of the pyramid. Yeah, they're basically part calling, of vegetables. They're basically calling corn bread at this point. <laughs> I'm like, yo, bread, bread, big bread is in trouble. Big. Bread. Everyone hates bread right now. No one's a fan of bread. I love bread, but I gotta God. say no to bread. Bread's the shit. Yeah, but yes, I gotta say no to bread. Why though? Why? Because it goes straight to my ass. Every who cares? <laughs> my ass cares, man, and my pants. Everyone is hating on the bread game. I hear you. Don't you dare loop corn in with that. I'll do my best to not. Corn's a veggie. Well, Dan. Uh, I think it's time for this week's True Crime. What do you got? Report came through um, from the Center of Disease Control and Prevention about a backyard chicken spreading illness to people in 49 states. A backyard chicken? Yeah, like backyard chickens were spreading illnesses. Like people would have chickens in their backyard. Yeah. Well, uh, apparently... A woman uh, was out in the back, 76 years old. She'd been collecting eggs from her home. This is in Australia. When uh, an aggressive rooster attacked her lower left leg, the woman collapsed to the ground. A rooster attacked her lower left leg. Uh Uh-huh. A rooster attacked her lower left leg. And the rooster had struck a varicose vein in her leg. And this was must have been some kind of principal vein because she died. What? Yeah. Her cause of death was listed as exsanguination. So uh, that's basically when you like when you let something bleed out, you've been insangu- you've been exsanguinated, uh, which is a severe loss of blood. Caused by the rooster's aggressive pecking. That's a terrible way to go. The attack is considered rare, you think, uh, because the bird's intention wasn't necessarily to kill you. It was to get you away from the eggs, probably. And it it just got a varicose vein in the right spot? Yes. And she bled out? She bled out. She was 76. She probably wasn't in all the best of health anyway, the fact that she couldn't get to a phone. But if you hit the proper vein or artery. Yeah, you're in trouble. I mean, yeah, especially if you don't try and stop the bleeding. And if your blood's real thin. I mean, I guess, yeah, there's certain things. You could have uh, special, like, vascular vulnerabilities that could you could be affected by it. And var- varicose veins are very common. With people. Yeah. Especially as you age. You start gushing. Yeah. But it shows you that animals of any size, anywhere in the world, can kill you with a simple peck. Hell yeah. Dude, I got a, I have an animal attack story. I forgot about it until you talked about animals pecking. Well, this isn't an animal attack, Dan. This is, this a, is a crime. crime. Right. This is a true crime, man. Dude, I was uh, on Sunday. I was in Ukaipa at Jenny's mom's, and I was mm. I had to go out for a run in the morning. I had to do twenty miles, and um, you did this out of Jenny's mom's at Jenny's mom's house. Yeah, so I, I was it was like six thirty. Okay, um, I ate breakfast. I was about to go out. Saw Julie. I was like, all right, see you in a little bit. It's gonna be a long time. <laughs> And uh, so I make my way out. I start running. I make a left on this just random on their their road or whatever. And behind, like, I get one block. And then there's this plot of land with, like, no, it's just hot, tall grass, no houses being built or anything. It's an empty lot or whatever. Okay. It's about 6.30 in the morning. I'm running. I'm just, you know, this is straight out the gate. Not even, like, right, a right. quarter mile or anything. I look to my left, and I see this fucking beast, this and this figure, this coyote. He was massive, 
and he is like, <laughs> he is staring me square in, the, in my soul. As you're running. As I'm running, and I stop, and I look back, and I look at him, and we exchange, like, pleasantries, basically, through our eyes. Pleasantries? Well, not pleasantries. We, we acknowledge that we are both see, looking at each other. Okay. And I mean, by continue to staring at each, by yeah. staring at each other. He's probably like 50, 40 feet away from me. Okay. And like, he makes, he makes like, he, he like makes like a little jerky motion, like almost to be like, what motherfucker? You want to go? You want something? Like he makes like a little motion. And then I was like, oh shit. And I like turned around booked it back to Jenny's mom's house like fast as fuck like were you lightning chased? were you chased I was like running like a horror movie like like over, looking over my shoulder and shit like oh my god oh my god <laughs> <laughs> like, I ran straight in the house and the, Julie was still there Julie's Jenny's sister if you guys don't know and she was like back so soon and I was like there's a fucking coyote outside and how big was he huge bigger than bigger, bigger than, than McFly bigger than McFly really he was big he was bad and he he was hungry and like i i I was like holy shit i can't go i I have to do like with with the marathon training like you gotta hit your sundays you gotta hit these these milestones those are the big run days so i'm like i have to go out i don't know what to do right i start googling i start looking up shit i'm like what do coyotes want like how do you what do you do when you see a coyote and cody i literally did everything wrong like apparently you're supposed to like get bigger and like scare the coyote and be like bah right but and then they were like whatever you do don't don't immediately run away from the coyote because then they think that you're prey and they know like you're a pussy how many times do coyotes attack people it's not often but uh. as but at, uh, I, when I was Googling, it was like, as time goes on, they're becoming more comfortable with people. With people, yeah. And even on my runs in Santa Clarita, like, if I go out at night, I've heard them, like, over my headphones, like, oh. And then I'm like, oh, fuck. Oh, my fucking God. Dance fear of coyotes. Dude, and I'm just. This coyote is bigger than McFly. He was big. Dude, I'm, lo- shit, I'm looking online and they're telling me that coyotes don't get bit much bigger than 50 pounds, man. Dude, this thing was. McFly's a- got 20 pounds on these dogs. This looked like Game of Thrones dire wolf. No he way. Was- he might have been a wolf. No way. This guy was ferocious. <laughs> I was fucking scared. And then there I started you know. thinking about it. I started thinking about it like just the dog. In general, like those types of animals. Okay. The canines. Yes. And I was thinking in my head, I was like, there's never going to be a time in my life where I don't immediately look at a dog and think, if this thing gets out of hand, I'm going to have to fuck it up. You know? Okay. Like it's all, it's very quick yeah. in my head. Like, the, the, but there's always that. Like when I run past them, when even a little tiny Shih Tzu like comes up, runs you're up to like me. Like in your head, you're envisioning like if it bites me, I am going to punch it. it or kick it. Yeah, or like how do I? How will I defend myself against this thing if it acts up? A Shih Tzu. Every any any kind of four legged animal, even a cat. Like if this cat fucking lunges at me, do I just do I kind of swat it out of the air? Or do I like dodge it and then kick it? You backhand a cat. <laughs> I will. I will backhand your cat. That will happen. And I don't hate dogs. I don't want to put that out there. I don't hate them. I hate coyotes. I'm not a fan. You don't seem very pro dog. I mean, I'm allergic for one. I'm allergic for one. Okay. 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 So like, I'm not very. Fr- I'm not very petty. I don't pet a lot of dogs. Okay. But like, I like McFly. McFly is cool. Yeah. But I'm like, if McFly, like, comes at me... You're dead. I'm probably dead. (laughs) But, like, I have thought, like, dude, if he, like, fucking goes for my jugular, we have to go... We have to throw hands. I will have to punch (laughs) your dog, Cody. (laughs) Like, we gotta throw hands, man. Nobody punches my dog. No one punches McFly. Uh, But, yeah, so that... That's that. Mm. But, uh, But look, look at this woman. She got bit in the freaking leg. 
busted her varicose. Blood now out, look at her. Bled out. Now she's dead. She should have kicked that rooster in the head. Well, she could have went to the grocery store and bought eggs like every normal fucking person <laughs> on the planet. But I guess she had a death sentence. Dude, home, I will speak from experience. Uncle Mary, Aunt Bob, Jenny's um, Jenny's stepmom's sister, aunt and uncle. Got it. They have chickens. And that's who, they put me on to cage-free organic eggs. Oh, right, right, right. It's the only eggs I'll eat. Yeah, you have a rule now. Yeah, I get it. They taste amazing. So it's worth it. Okay, you can taste happiness. Yeah. All right, well, that's this week's True True Crime. Crime. I think it's time for this week's Champion Champion of the Week. Week. The Champion of the Week. Yeah. You want to talk about rising to the occasion? Sure. You want to talk about beating expectations? Yeah, I'm okay with that. You want to talk about staring fear and death in the face and saying, not today? Can we? Okay. This 29-year-old student pilot in Australia is being hailed as a hero after he managed a perfect airplane landing landing during his first flying lesson. Okay. Tell um, me more. His instructor... Yeah, well, this, this champion's name is Max Sylvester. I will say, you really shouldn't trust a guy with first two first names, Cody Frederick. Um, what about uh, two last names? Mm. What, like Matthews Matthews? Or Fitzgerald Frederick? <laughs> you should never, never, you should run far, far away from two last names. <laughs> but uh, so this kid, well, he's not really a kid. He's 30, 29 years old. Uh, his instructor just basically passed out while they were flying in the air. Wow, that's a big deal. In one of those like dinky Harrison yeah. Harrison Ford planes. And uh he immediate uh so Max immediately contacted a nearby control tower and told them of the predicament and he can be heard describing the instructor's condition saying he's leaning over my shoulder. I'm trying to keep him up but he keeps falling down and through the radio contact with the air traffic off- officials Sylvester was guided through an emergency landing at Perth's Jan Docked Airport. Okay, so he's in Australia. Yeah. Wow. And he was guided how to land the plane. Yeah. But he had some flight license. Twice. Twice. He was up there twice. Probably never landed one. No, no, no. Yeah. The here's what the air traffic controller said to him. You're doing a really good job. <laughs> I know this is really stressful, but you're going to do an amazing job. And we're going to help you get down to the ground, okay? Yeah, it's like fucking Apollo 13. We're going to get you down, man. Just follow my lead. I watched Apollo 13 the other night. It's amazing. It's it's such an amazing movie. And Ed Harris is like, they said something like, uh, I need a percentage. I need a chance to know if these guys are going to make it. And one of the guys was like, one out of ten. And Ed Harris is like, gentlemen, this is going to be the day that Nasha shines. We're going to be able to bring both of these, all three of these men home safe. And there's going to be, and if there's any other talk of that, I will have you escorted out of this room and taken off of the property. God, that movie's so good. You make me want to watch it right now. Dude, I hadn't seen it since it first came out. I, I feel like I told you about it and you downplayed it. And I was like, Apollo 13's the shit. Apollo 13's pretty great. I said it was my favorite Ron Howard, and I think that's when you were like, you're no, ridiculous. No, man, it's not the best Ron Howard movie. Get out of it. Maybe your favorite Ron Howard movie, but Far and Away is more fun. Dude. I love Far and Away. In Apollo 13, when they freaking like have throw all the materials on the table, he's like, here's what they've got. You got to make this thing get into this this square thing, get in this round hole. Yeah. And then, uh, and then Gary Sinise is in the simulator, and he was like, do they have this up there? No. He's like, I don't want it. Yeah. I want you bring me with everything they've got up here, up there. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, it's such a good film. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Did that win Best Picture? Yeah, I think it did. 
Did it? That was 90 f- 95. It's a fucking good movie, man. Such a, it's a fun movie. It's a fun movie. So to be a champion, it takes a couple other champions to help you through it, to assist. Right. You need to be able to to call on people for help. Realize that you're not alone, and it takes a group. So that's that. That's that, man. Whew. Well, Shit. Dan, I feel pretty good. I feel so good. I feel like the week went well. I feel like we're here today. The podcast seemed to move along. And, you know, any f- any kind of final thoughts? We want some f- feedback, Dag Nabbit. Oh, feedback. Okay, sure, yeah. Leave us a review. Tell Hit us. us up. Yeah. Share us with your friends. Yes. Tell people about the Danny Cody podcast and tell us what you like about it. What can we do for you? Yeah, help us help you. Right. We've done 184 of these things, man. We have. We've done 184. And uh, we're, they're just going to get better. Send us shit. Send us articles. Send uh, us send us funny videos. Correct. Send us funny videos. And just so you guys know, uh, in regards to the podcast today, uh, Apollo uh, 13 was nominated for Best Picture, but it lost to Braveheart. Oh, so, of course. However, it did win two Oscars, one for Best Sound and one for Best Film Editing. So, wow. congrats to uh, Apollo 13. Thank you guys for listening to the Dan and Cody podcast. Yeah, and check out Patreon. Yeah, because that's... Uh, we got extra shit on there. We got extra shit on there. So, everybody have a great week. Uh, we look forward to next week where Dan is going to be dressed up in a dress uh, just for me because I, I made the request. That's right. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening and laughing with the Dan and Cody podcast. Our email is Dan and Cody podcast at gmail.com. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We are on Instagram at Dan Cody podcast. Check out our website, Dan and Cody.com. And you can contribute to the podcast by going to patreon.com slash Dan Cody podcast. Subscribe, bitch. Ain't nobody played a tough guy to shit, bro. Right.